This video is the follow-up to the previous video called Backup to the Cloud. The three servers have been protected to the cloud for the last few weeks. I'll now simulate a site failure by disconnecting the VPN. So the VPN is disconnected and we can see that we have a communication error. We're no longer backing up to the cloud. Just quickly have a look at the repository server to check what images I can uh, restore. I'm going to use local credentials because the domain is no longer accessible. I can see my available images and I can see the image state is good. So I could restore the live version of the data or I could restore a snapshot. I can see a whole list of snapshots which have been occurring um, every hour while we've been synced. Nine times out of ten though I'm going to want to restore the live version of the data which is the latest version available. Now that I have identified the images I'd like to restore, I just need to deploy some target servers to restore the images too. Now I'm using a virtual cloud environment, but you could be recovering to a physical server um, or to an ESX or Hyper-V virtual machine. It, all that matters is that the operating system that you're preparing is the same as the operating system that we're actually going to be restoring, which in this case is Windows 2008 R2. Of course, it's also important that the target server we're preparing has enough storage to hold the data that we're going to restore to it and that it has enough CPU and memory to be able to run the workload when we have recovered the server. Okay, my three recovery targets are now prepared. The recovery target servers have been deployed in the cloud, but I need to prepare the recovery server uh, by installing DoubleTake and enabling .NET. The DoubleTake Backup Console makes this easy using the Prepare Recovery Server Wizard. So use the IP address and the uh, credentials for the recovery server and DoubleTake will verify that .NET is installed and, or enabled and it will push out DoubleTake and use a temporary license key that is valid for 10 days while you recover the data. It shouldn't take too long to deploy the double tape backup agent to all three of the recovery servers. I'm going to recover the domain controller first. So I'm going to select my image for the domain controller, the live data, and choose the recovery server that I'm going to recover the domain controller to. So it's 192.168.1.54 is the IP address being used. Um, give the local credentials for the recovery server. So double take gathers information about the recovery server. And then we're prompted to choose whether we want to recover the entire server or just select data. We're then prompted to choose whether we want to do a LAN based recovery or a WAN based. We're obviously going to a different subnet. So we choose a WAN recovery. We're not going to update DNS settings because this is the domain controller. This server will become the DNS server that will be updated for future restores. We can then choose some uh, recovery shutdown options. Do we want to shut down the source server? Do we want to leave the, the protection jobs running? And do we want to wait for unit user intervention before we reboot the recovered server and it will become the domain controller? DoubleTake will verify the recovery options and then we can click the finish button and begin the recovery process. The recovery process involves double take, creating a replication set containing the data that we wish to restore, creating the connection from the repository server to the recovery server, and then finally we will apply the system state from the server that was being backed up onto the recovery server. All data has been restored to the target recovery server, but we did select to pause the process before completing the system state being applied. So I'm just going to continue the process now. Now this is going to merge the system state and registry from the server that was being backed up to the recovery server. Very, very similar process as that is used by DoubleTake when you use full server failover with DoubleTake availability. This is a, allows us to restore images from one type of hardware to another type of hardware, 
or from a physical server to a virtual machine in the cloud. Okay, recovery is complete. The domain controller has rebooted. It is now a fully functioning domain controller. We can now go through the same process for the SQL Server and the uh, Exchange 2010 Server that were also being backed up. The recovery process is almost identical to the domain controller. There is one additional step that needs looking at. The one recovery, we can now update the DNS server. The DNS server is of course the domain controller that we've just restored. So we add that DNS server IP address, add credentials you needed to update and these are the domain credentials and then verify that we can actually update the credentials. We then continue the recovery process in exactly the same way. Okay, my three recovery jobs have completed. I now just need to verify that the restored servers are actually functioning. So remote desktop to the domain controller, I can see that the name has come across, HVDC1, and also that the Active Directory roles are installed. If I connect to the SQL server, I can again see the SQL server name has come across. And if I launch SQL Server Management Studio, I can connect to the local host and can see the databases have come across. There's my demo uh, database. Finally, if I connect to my Exchange server, I can see the Exchange server name has come across, EX2010. And if I launch into the Explorer, I can connect to Outlook Web Access, log in using uh, the administrator account, and I can see my emails are in place. And I can just quickly send a test email and verify that the email is received so Exchange is functioning correctly please visit us at www.bcap.com.au.